everybody, welcome to another rambling episode with your host, yours truly, the guy speaking, me killed him. I don't know how to do introductions, and so that's my introduction. Oh boy. Anyways, yeah, we're rambling today. I'm just here by myself doing my update on life or whatever. It's not really a vlog in that sense, it's just really talking about whatever's on my mind. And as such, like the video game on screen, gardening! And, you know, plants, because I, I do I do the growing and I do the planting and stuff. You could you could see some of those in my last video. And, I mean, there's been some progress. There's been some updates. I mean, those were outdated photos, so maybe I should get some more recent stuff going. Like, uh, I don't know, tomatoes. Those actually started flowering. That's pretty awesome, because, you know, tomato, like, fruit, actual tomatoes are around the corner. And so it's like, Gilm's going to get tomatoes, except... Gildam doesn't really like tomatoes, and you might be wondering, Gildam, why do you grow something you don't want to eat? Uh, it's because, you know, like, um, it, it, it's the joy of growing. I, I like growing, and I like growing tomato plants, and uh, maybe if I thought about it a little bit better, I'd be able to actually pick tomatoes that are better for, like, stewing and making sauce with. Because, let's be honest, tomato sauce, marinara, uh, spaghetti, pasta... Pizza, like basically all that stuff is delicious. You know, I, I like byproducts of tomatoes. I don't like tomatoes raw or by themselves. I'm just not an avid fan of that kind of stuff. I'll eat them. I learned how to just like eat them, so you know, I'm, I'll probably do that. But uh, yeah, you know, maybe if I planted better this year, I probably would have like actually done actual tomato tomatoes, get a couple going, some variety, and actually. Whole, put them in a pot, stew them, make some sauce. Oh, that would have been delicious. And then I'd actually start getting into cooking again. But, you know, I digress. You know, it's the joy of growing. And so clearly, you know, I, I got stuff growing. I, I got some, like, really awesome things. I also got, like, I'm also tempting fate. I got some corn growing. Now, this is only about two weeks of progress. And that that's not too bad if you ask me. It's, it's pretty awesome, but the problem with actually growing corn this late is I don't know if I'm actually gonna get any, like, ears of corn from it, you know? I don't know if there's gonna be any fruits of my labor here, so it's it's kind of tempting fate here, but the back of the packet says, like, it should take about 60 days or something. Actually, uh, no, that's not my, that's not my seed packet. It's not my seed bag. I got seed bag. I planned next year so I got all my seeds and stuff like that but uh yeah so I got like my seed packets and stuff like that and uh on it it's uh, like 60 days in fact you know what give me a second I'm gonna go figure that out I'm gonna go pause the rec oh man all right note to self Gildan make sure that you have the right setting when resuming on the microphone otherwise you're gonna be talking to yourself and period all right so i'm back hi everybody i grabbed my seed bag because you know again i was trying to find like the results on that on that corn that i planted the sweet corn because uh you know gildam he likes to do that uh 63 days everybody 63 days it turns out i was three days off <laughs> memorized the 60 part forgot that you know there's an extra three days to it but hey I'm not complaining. Honestly, when it comes down to it, I want to grow corn. I want to see, you know, if theoretically the estimate on the packet, because, you know, even though it says a thing till harvest, you kind of have to take it as an estimate, because, you know, it's not its not like literally 63 days, you're going to have new corn, bro. It's going to be fantastic. Grow your plants from seeds and then, like, harvest, like, all those ears of corn, and you'll have all the cob that you want, all the corn on the cob. Mm. And I'm not a huge fan of corn on the cob, which, you know, I guess that's a little questionable as to why, again, you know, much like tomatoes, like, kill them. Why do you grow? If, like, you're you're not gonna, like, eat it, you're not, like, a huge fan of eating it, it's because, uh, I like to grow plants. It's therapeutic. Something about it makes me feel more calmer about my life. And, you know, it's, it's that dependency. It's a good surrogate to owning a pet, because, you know, I like dependency. You know, it's the fruits of my labor. I like thinking I did a good job. You know, something along those lines. 
And I don't know, I, I, corn gets big. It, it grows on a stock, and the stock gets huge. They even make mazes out of how, like, how corn and stuff like You know, it doesn't matter. Point is, corn gets big. That, that's really all I'm trying to get at. And something interesting about corn and stocks and everything like that, uh, you know, theoretically, should have some in September, but, you know, because I planted it a little late, because normally when you do the whole growing thing, you kind of want to start at the beginning, like in spring, possibly like April, well, that's a pretty good month, especially around here, uh, May is also pretty good, that, that's about like when you want to start doing the planting and the seeding and the what have you, so that, you know, it has all summer to grow, and, it's midsummer, you know, it's like July. July, like 22nd as of recording this, but it's coming out tomorrow, so you know it's July 23rd when you're listening to this, or like past that, I don't know, it's up to you. You guys uh, do what you want. Probably no one's gonna hear this, but I don't care, because Gilton talks about things like. Mm. <laughs> I don't know why I got really excited there for a second. I, I guess my point is. Um, corn, testing Mother Nature here to see whether or not it's going to grow the way that it should on the package, saying estimate. And you know what, uh, Gildum, bring up, bring up, like, the, uh, the picture, you know, you did the thing with the pictures. Hopefully you're doing the thing with the pictures. If you're not, that's fine, but, you know, do the thing with the pictures where you're showing off all the fruits of your labor and growing and gardening, because I guess, I guess this is the segment, you know, gardening with Gildum. Um, so yeah. Here's my corn, you know, I got two little stocks growing, uh, pretty new. Uh, this is about a week and a half worth of progress right here, what you're seeing. Uh, so yeah, not even two weeks and it's already getting to this pretty si pretty good size. Pretty good size, you know, it's, I'm impressed. And it finally takes fruit. I mean, before I actually planted it in the cups, I had about like, I want to say the roots were about, no, they were like an inch and a half in length. I mean, it violently starts growing like crazy, and it's, it shocks me, because it's like, what, wow, corn really just it starts violently taking shape when it starts sprouting, and the roots get deep. And so I was like, I need to do something about this, because uh, it, it, it needs to grow properly. But hey, if nothing else, I like the byproducts of things that I don't like. Like with tomatoes, I like sauce. I like making tomato sauce. Well, actually, that's a lie. I haven't made tomato sauce, but I like tomato sauce. I like making things. You know, you can make pasta, you can make like uh, marinara, and you know, with that kind of stuff, you can really bring out the essence of like cooking, like pasta and pizza and uh, dipping sauce. All the things that you could ever want. Mm. It's really good stuff. Let's be honest here. I want to get back into cooking, and I think the best way to do that is actually to create your own ingredients so you can get back into cooking. Granted, I feel like you can't provide everything, so you're going to have to buy some things. But hey, if you get a basis for something to cook, you know, you can just go on from there, and I think that's great. Eventually, I hope with my kale, I'll eventually start trying to figure out how to make kale chips. Granted, I feel like if I was really gonna do that, I'd need to like, I don't know, maybe grow multiple, cause I feel like with one, it's it's a little difficult. But at the same time, I mean, I wouldn't be opposed. I'd, I'd be totally down with that. But anyways, uh, I, I am a little more interested in next year, cause next year I, I plan to be a little more ambitious with my gardening. Namely, trying to get into hydroponics, trying to get that going. Uh, I got I got some pretty awesome things, you know. Uh, like I said, I got my seed bag, and pretty much I got like everything I'm gonna be doing for next year. The two main things that come to mind is that I'm actually gonna be doing pumpkins and watermelon. Not that there's anything wrong with either. I mean, like they're pretty good, they're pretty dope. I think everyone can get behind, you know, pumpkins and watermelon. And I mean, like I'm talking about pumpkins that I can eat, you know, I can cook with those kind of pumpkins. Uh, we're not talking about the store-bought ones, you know, the ones that you get, like, around Halloween and you, like, carve for jack-o'-lanterns. I mean, those are alright. There's nothing wrong with those. They're not really good for cooking, because if you don't know, pumpkins come in a whole shape and variety, and clearly some are better for cooking than others. And, uh, the ones that you use in pies are apparently the small sugar pumpkins, which is actually, I think, their name. According to the packet, it says... 
small sugar pumpkin. I have 60 seeds apparently. And I was thinking like if I do hydroponics I can kind of just focus on them getting their nutrients and water and they can just kind of keep on growing from there along with the watermelon. And the main reason for that is because uh, you know they, they take a lot of water. A lot a lot of water. So I'm thinking you know tote Trainer cup, going the crack key method in terms of hydroponics, seeing how that works out. It's all theoretical. It may fail horrendously. That is that is another mindset that I got going on. Uh, but at the same time, I I feel like you know it should work, but again, it might not. There there's always a chance that it may just be a horrible mess. And I might like flub this up, and uh, I have to I have to hang my head in shame, you know, as a person who's being an amateuristic gardener. Uh, something I would like to ask, if anyone's really curious, uh, because I had one of my friends tell me I should actually start doing like a gardening snake. Or let me try to re-say that a gardening segment on my channel, which I would definitely call gardening with Gildum. It just kind of rolls off the tongue a little bit. I think it's because my name starts with a G, you know, here, my username. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I like gardening, you know. Being a warrior, you know, you gotta you gotta have your hobbies. And uh, totally into the gardening, bro. I like, I like making things self-sufficient a little bit. I like growing my own food so that I can cook it up later in the night, have things to go about. Because, I mean, really, when it comes down to it, don't we all want to have, like, our own unique traits and things that make us good? Okay, I guess good is very ambiguous. Uh, uh, basically, you know, our own little quirks that just kind of give us a little bit of individuality. Me, I've always had, like, a knack for, like, taking care of things, because, you know, Gildum has empathy. For some reason, and I can't explain it, I'm probably super empathetic if people really want to get into it. Uh, it's a little more selective than you think, but at the same time, like, I care deeply about things. That's why when it comes to gardening, like, I check my stuff to make sure that it's, like, accurately watered and it's growing perfectly, and if there's any pests, I carefully just try to remove them. Like, the other day, my lettuce had aphids, and it's like, no! But fortunately, there hasn't been any infestations, so I mean, I, I can't really say that, you know, things aren't going well. Uh, because they pretty much are. Uh, I don't know if I worded that correctly, but, you know, uh, my point is, my garden's doing pretty good, so uh, I don't really have to worry too much about it, and I'm, I'm happy with it. Things are pretty good for now. This is a good first attempt. And, I mean, like, I got, I got peppers and tomatoes. Those are, like, my two real harvestable fruit crops, but the other things that I got going on uh, are all things that I can kind of harvest individually, like, here and there. Because, you know, I got, like, some spinach, some kale, some, uh... Sorry, I have to think for a second. Cilantro, basil, and then I also got, oh man, lettuce. Yeah. I think I named those all. <laughs> I think I named those all. <laughs> I don't know how to apparently enunciate and pronounce what I'm trying to say, but really I'm just trying to say I got five different plants that I'm trying to harvest at individual times or like all at the same time. I got like Whenever they get big enough, I just kind of prune the bigger leaves so that the newer growth can grow a lot better and faster and quicker and what have you. And so, you know, it, it works out very well. And hopefully at some point I will be able to clone my basil. Oh, by the way, I actually did try my hand at cloning. That was pretty interesting. I cloned one of my uh, grandma's tomato plants because she has some tomato plants herself. And, uh... She didn't get them from seed, you know, she actually got starters from, like, a nursery. And so I was like, oh, hey, I heard, I was watching this video on YouTube about, like, you know, cloning tomato plants. And so I was asking her, like, would you mind if I, like, did a little pruning with your tomatoes? And she's like, not at all. Also, she was kind of asking me, how do I, like, promote tomato growth? Because, you know, pruning is very essential when it comes to that kind of thing. It helps trying to, like, produce fruit, and it also helps to actually get it to grow a lot better and, you know, able to do what it does. So, with my grandma's plant, you know, she since she was going to prune it, because I was kind of telling her, you know, it's important. I took one of her, uh, I took some of the 
things that you can actually clone with the tomato plant. I actually tried to see if it worked out, and I actually got results finally. It took root, and it was amazing. Granted, I didn't use any of that, like, what is it, the, the clone root gel or whatever, the thing that really helps promote, like, root growth a lot quicker, but... You, you don't need it. It's one of those things that just helps speed things along. You know, that's kind of like the nutrients that I use for my own gardening. You know, it just helps promote better growth. It's like a vitamin to help it just like really take off. But at the same time, you know, I, I like to think it's not really like doing the whole hormonal, like enforcing and infusing and like hybriding like things that, you know, shouldn't work. But, you know, through science it does. Uh, really getting to the nasty effects of like experimentation mm. But I'm getting off topic I'm just saying I didn't use like the cloning root gel or like fluid or whatever it is that you use to actually clone plants uh, Thinking about it but at the same time. It's not a necessity And I mean you can also do that with basil it really helps out trying to make your basil grow like on and on and it's the gift that never stops giving <laughs> But I like basil. Basil is great for cooking. Oh. I think now that I've taken up more than half the video, though, I should probably move on to different topics because, I mean, really, I could go on with gardening. In fact, you know, I, I feel like if I was to, it'd be pretty intense. But uh, I don't know. I feel like if anyone is listening to this, I owe it to them to kind of just talk about other things because, you know, gardening is one of those things that, you know, you can tell there's a lot of passion, you know, and that's something about, like, myself. I, I get very passionate about things, and it comes very intensified in, like, spurs, but at the same time, like, I feel like it also can kind of burn out very easily if I'm not careful. So, holding passion, difficult, but being passionate about something, easy as fuck. <laughs> so, you know, moving on from gardening... I guess something that I'm feeling pretty passionate about in terms of gaming is I actually did decide to delve into Persona 5, which is something I didn't think I was going to do. To be honest, uh, you know, I have a couple friends, they were really into Persona 5, in fact they still are, I'm willing to bet they have like a lot on their mind, Oh, I gotta readjust myself. Uh, anyways, so yeah, you know, they're really into Persona 5, they've been like talking to me, telling me, yo man, get into Persona 5, it's, it's dope, it's the bomb, it's amazing, and it is, but for the longest time, I just didn't want to do it, because much like Undertale, uh, if I'm told to do something, you know, there's this rebellious side deep within my inner soul that's like, no, I'm not gonna do that, because, you know, it's like, I do what I want. When I feel like doing this, I will do it, but until then, I'm not gonna do it. And I tell it was a lot like that, because I had like eight different people coming to me and just being like, yo, have you played Undertale? I was like, no, I didn't. And they're like, dude, play Undertale, it's amazing. And I was like, I don't want to. On the other hand, I was playing Lisa, so, you know, it's like, Lisa the Painful RPG, I'd, I'd say it was like a good surrogate. And you know what? To me, that represents a lot more heart and soul than Undertale did, but I have my own reasons for that. I think it's the mature themes and like, I don't know, something about it just, it's like, it's so moving. Oh, if I ever get back into streaming, I'm totally doing that game. Mm. I digress, you know, that's not what I'm trying to say. I actually got into Persona 5. I didn't think I was going to. Uh, Owl Flame kind of convinced me a little bit. Because, you know, he was just like, Yo, dog, Persona 5 is amazing. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. I hear about it all the time. And he's like, no, man, you don't know. And it's like, but I don't, I'm not going to play it. I'll probably play it next year. And he's like, no, man, you should play it now. And I was like, but I don't know if I'm going to. Because, you know, everyone's, like, saying I should. You know, the, like, everybody here is, like, Persona 5 is good. My friend in particular is like, yo, have you played Persona 5? It's amazing. Here's why. And I was like, no, I don't want spoilers. I'm super picky about this. It was like Undertale in much the same light. Because with Undertale, I didn't want to touch it yet. But when I finally did... I was like, okay, then I'll talk about it. But it's like, until I did, I wanted to hear nothing about it. And it's like, same with Persona 5. And if anyone did, I get, I get like, a little sore and pissed off. Because it's like, uh, let, me, let me find this out, you know? I'll get to it when I get to it. Just hold on, everybody. Save your comments. Save whatever. I'll get into Persona 5 when I get into Persona 5. And finally I did, and so it's like, I'm a little more open to talking about it. And my, 
out flames a little bit. Like, you know, I'll uh, I'll talk about things as you get to them. I'm, I'm not gonna, like, discuss anything until then. By the way, shout out to that guy. Throw a card up here. All right, good job, Gildam. You did good. All right. <laughs> now that I said that, Alphalim's gonna be like, what, what, what? Now, I'm gonna text him, like, as I do this. Oh, I can totally text him as I do this. Okay, but all that said, you know, Persona 5, I'm having a lot of fun with it. I'm not gonna really get into it. I'm not gonna try to praise it or, like, give it a lot of love, although, you know, there is totally that. Uh, and I'm, I don't know, I feel like it's past the prime of, like, if you haven't heard of Persona 5 and you, if you don't know, I mean, you, like, I, I guess you weren't interested to begin with. And if you were, I mean, yeah, you're, you probably already played it. That's kind of how I do, how I kind of think about everything. Um, so, yeah, you know, it's like Persona 5, great game. I knew I was probably going to love it, but at the same time, I was very hesitant just because I didn't think I was going to be into it all that much. So, you know, I'm, I'm a little impressed that, you know, it's like I actually was drawn to just pop into my PS4 and just, like, start going at it. Uh, I had a similar experience with... Persona 4, except uh, instead of actually pressing the start button, I put it in my PS2 and I like closed the disc tray, saw the opening cutscene, you know, the one that just naturally plays if you don't press anything. Then I got to the start menu and lo and behold, I was just like, I'll save this for later. <laughs> I don't know why my mind just naturally was like, I can't press the star button. It's like I tried, but like, it's like, it's like when you want to, but your thumb just won't like press down on the X button or it's like whatever, whatever you got going on. It's just not going to press down. It's like I could not bring myself to play Persona 4 for whatever reason. Although I do plan to in the future. I don't know when. Uh, maybe maybe sometime in the near future now that I'm playing Persona 5 although I feel like once I beat Persona 5 I might be burned out so it's it's hard to say uh, that said you know I didn't want to really get into it until like I felt comfortable enough you know trying to get ahead on YouTube so like I still keep a constant schedule and that's important to me you know I don't want to like really start a game that I'm just gonna be super addicted to and like kind of put aside like all my responsibilities on YouTube granted it's not like super responsibility I mean I'm, I I don't expect anyone to be like kill them where the fuck are you man you promised the last guardian or you promised like world of final fantasy I mean like I don't know maybe I should probably put like new Final fantasy part every Monday and Friday new last guardian every like Tuesday and Thursday uh, new Plague of Shadows on, like, Wednesday. <laughs> and, I mean, like, I don't know. Saturday is kind of a wild card. Saturday is kind of like, uh, most likely it's whatever I'm doing with, like, a friend or just randomly just whatever I feel. Or it's probably going to be Plague of Shadows. It, it, Saturday is a wild card day in terms of uploading. It's whatever I want it to be, which I kind of like. I kind of like the option of having something that's just kind of like whatever. But it's kind of my uploading schedule in a nutshell, if you will. But otherwise, I mean, yeah, it's just... I mean, I, I, it's not like I really have a responsibility for anything, but it is kind of one of those things where it's like, I'm, I'm doing it for me, you know? This was my, uh... This was my New Year's resolution for this year, you know? I really, really just wanted to make sure that like I keep up with like a YouTube schedule grand I did take like a week off and I mean that, that's just because I felt like it <laughs> uh, there, there's really no explanation I mean I probably could have said something on Twitter but you know I'm so low-key it's like who's really gonna care I mean maybe there's one person for you you know I apologize uh, I'm sure you understand more than anything else about what's going on and if you and I mean like if there's someone else someone who's watching this and kind of being like yo I'm here I, I do the thing I've watched your videos it's like well you know it's like you're more than welcome to accept another apology that I owe you just bumped into my mic I apologize for that bro uh yeah it's like you know it's 
it is what it is, you know, it's like, it, it, I guess if you're just tuning in, it doesn't matter because, you know, that week's already passed. Uh, but yeah, you know, I've just been kind of keeping up with a lot of, like, trying to have a constant upload schedule, just like a video per day. Because I like doing it, I like having stuff, I like scheduling, that kind of stuff. And I think it works out pretty well as things are, so I'm not really, like, hesitant about, like, trying to maintain that, you know. It's like, just trying to make sure everything flows smoothly, just trying to make sure that I have a constant uploading schedule. Uh, and that's what's difficult about getting into a game like Persona 5, because it's going to take a lot of attention, and it's going to be one of those things where it's, like, super addicting that you're just like, I got I got to play it tomorrow, man. I got to know what happens in the story. I get like that. I have huge, intensified urges to play a game if I'm really into what the thing is, and I guess maybe part of that was just, like, why I was hesitant about Persona 5. Just because it's like, I know I'm going to get into it. Okay, it happened with Persona 3. I, I'm sure I might be able to find something along those lines with Persona 4. <laughs> I mean, I'd have to go in with a different mindset. But, you know, I'm sure once I start getting enthralled with the story of Persona 4, maybe the high school aspect, I'll, I'll, it'll be like the same effect. You know, it happened with Final Fantasy. It happens with a lot of games that I like. I just get this huge, intense urge to play it. And it'll happen randomly, you know? I could just be, like, at work, and then all of a sudden it's like, I, I gotta go home, like, right now. I gotta go play Persona 5. I can't explain it. <laughs> I have I have those intense urges. I can't explain it. I wish I could. I try sometimes. And I, I think the only way you'll understand is if you get the same exact feeling. Whew! I've also been having, like, this intense urge to play Catherine, and I can't explain why. Maybe it's because, you know, Persona 5 kind of reminds me, but I, I don't know. I think it's more like the puzzle aspects, which reminds me. There's, like, this costume set that you can get for Persona 5 that is totally based on, like, the Catherine set, and uh, it, it's weird because, like, a lot of the characters kind of remind me of Catherine, much of the same where the costume is very representative of the character, like the main character, you got like Vincent, and uh, on, she's like totally Catherine with the C, and it's like, oh man, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. I knew these characters reminded me of something. And so it's like, uh, it, it's weird in so many ways, but at the same time, I'm just thinking to myself, man, I kind of want to go play Catherine. I don't understand it. I, I really wish they'd make a sequel, uh, a, like a non-related sequel, where it's not like the characters from Catherine, but it's like a different story, but, you know, it's like the Golden Playhouse setting, where you got, like, uh, what's-her-name, like, doing the intro, and then it goes into this different story where, I don't know, it's based around a different sin, maybe, like, greed or love, no. They already did love with Catherine. You know, like, maybe greed, maybe wrath, like, some sort of revenge story. Well, like, some kid who's, like, broke and wants to make a lot of money, and he has, like, this grand plan, or something along those lines, you know, so something focused on something else, maybe even gluttony, maybe it's some guy who can't stop eating, and it's, like, based on your choices in the game, you either lose a shit ton of weight and you're happy, or, like, I don't know, you find peace within being, like, a big old, big, big fatty fat fat. <laughs> I had to do that. <laughs> No, I, I don't know, but, uh, yeah, you know, it's like, I, I kind of want a sequel to Catherine, much in the sense of story, but, like, not based around lust and two women and cheating, uh, and not related to Catherine in the slightest, just let's focus on a different sort of aspect, you know, if Catherine is based on the sin of lust, let's base it on a different sin, and let's have something that's, like, basically a puzzle platformer kind of thing, or, like, I don't know, block moving. Uh, it could be a different mechanic, but maybe have it puzzle-based, you know? I, I I would really dig that. I think that'd be pretty good. Like, some sort of follow-up to Catherine that's, like, uh, based around it, but, like, a different story. Uh, you, you know, I, I, that's kind of what I would really dig. I think it would be pretty cool. Or actually, you know what would be good? Maybe, like, some sort of, like, uh, some sort of sloth territory with, like, I don't know, I want to say, like, a Hikikomori. Uh, that, that's one of those Japanese terms for, like, you know, some sort of shut-in. Some kind of guy who's, like, super introverted, doesn't want to leave the room. I mean, I, I'm like that. Why? 
I'm not gonna suggest that they make a game based around my life. That would be so sad and like ridiculous. I can't imagine a game based around kill them. I mean, at best, I think we're looking at some sort of RPG maker game that I make, and that that's just an autobiography. That's so stupid. Anyways, um, I I'm running out of steam. I th I think I'm gonna end it off here. Um, so yeah, you guys have a fantastic day. This has been Rambling with Gildum, going off on 10 different thoughts. I like gardening. Alright, I'll see you guys later.